Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming out this evening. And I want to say to Senator Obama, welcome to Red Sox Nation. Around here, around here, we know how to come from behind and win. And that is exactly what we are gathered here to help the senator do. A lot of Democrats are feeling heady these days. We're sensing victory. We feel like we can reach out and grab the White House again. And we have, we have good reason to feel that way. Democrats control the Congress today, the first woman Speaker of the House in history. A majority of the nation's governors are Democrats today, including the first Democratic governor in Massachusetts in 16 years. And the National Republican Party seems in disarray. I don't know, I don't know if you've been watching any of the Republican debates, but the candidates seem to be trying to out-Bush Bush. But they are aligning themselves with failure. Because the same folks who claim to believe in small government and fiscal restraint are responsible for the largest increase in the federal deficit and the biggest expansion in the size of the federal government in history. The same folks who say that religious fundamentalism is a danger to us abroad are busy promoting it right here at home. The same folks who say that government should have as little impact as possible in the lives of private citizens are responsible for the greatest encroachment on personal freedoms in a generation and the biggest presidential power grab in our history. Remember, these are the same folks who brought the full weight of the federal government to the bedside in the hospital of Terry Schiavo at the end of her life. The field of Republican candidates is trying to outbush the very president who brought us a failed response to Hurricane Katrina and a failed strategy in Iraq. No wonder Democrats are feeling heady. We all know a whole lot of people, Democrats, Republicans, and independents too, who are unwilling to entrust our government again to people who fundamentally don't believe in government in the first place. But I'm asking you, I'm asking you to beware, my friends. Beware. Because discontent with Republicans is not enough to assure a Democratic victory, nor should it be. I believe the challenges before us as a nation transcend part partisan politics. The truth is, we don't just need a Democrat. We need a leader. Our nation has been on its economic and social knees before. In an earlier generation, we faced a dangerous foreign threat and deep domestic suffering. Our leadership did more than develop new policies. Our leaders reclaimed American values and called on a generation to serve and to sacrifice. And that generation, the so-called greatest generation, saw it as their patriotic duty to step up. That generation is the generation that fought and beat the Nazis, that rebuilt Europe, that built the federal highway system and great public universities, that expanded the middle class, that that spawned the civil rights revolution. And the rest of us, the rest of us have been supported and enabled and even enriched by their service and their sacrifice for a very long time. But look around, my friends. Look around. Look into the eyes of your neighbors and your friends. Listen to the anxiety in their voices. Glance out of the windows of your car as you commute to work at the number of empty shops and for sale signs. Look up from your paper or your iPod playlist on the bus ride home. 
at the homeless woman and her kids who ride from one end of the line to the other to stay dry when it's raining outside. Take a minute to consider how much of your family's budget, let alone the state's budget, is dedicated to health care costs. Consider for a minute that the bridge in Minneapolis that collapsed this summer is but one of thousands of bridges and roads in Massachusetts and all across the country, long overdue for repairs and refurbishment. Connect up the breakdown in families and the elimination of the assault weapons ban to the shooting of a 13-year-old boy right here in Dorchester two weeks ago and the loss of boys and girls in neighborhoods all over the country. Think about what it means in schooling and social services and criminal justice tomorrow by vetoing S-CHIP today and the way it denies basic health care services to needy children. Consider all those poor people abandoned on those rooftops after Katrina who were abandoned before that storm and how many remain so even today. So much damage has been done to our country, to her infrastructure, her spirit, and her standing in the world under George Bush's brand of Republican leadership. The truth is we have a mess on our hands. And cleaning that up will depend on more than good government policies and programs and partisan politics. It will depend on you and me, on us acting like citizens again. Sometimes I wonder if we get so discouraged that we can't even imagine what a whole, functioning, peaceful national community could be like. But just imagine for a minute. Imagine a nation where young people find love and companionship in a neighborhood instead of in a gang. Imagine a nation where public schools instill a love of learning and a respect for achievement, not just success on a test. Imagine a nation... Imagine a nation where we make things again because our investments in new industries like clean energy and life sciences produce just, not just a cleaner environment, but good jobs too. Imagine, imagine a nation that deals with the causes of crime and violence instead of just warehousing offenders so that they come out more dangerous than they were when they went in in the first place. <laughs> 